Now I have to warn you ahead of time, uh, you want this comparison, but in order to do it justice, I have to throw a lot of numbers at you. I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible, but there's a lot going on here. And so we're gonna be referencing a lot of math and a lot of numbers. Guys, I'm paranoid about this video. This is gonna be great. If you're in the 24% federal income tax bracket and you wanna know whether or not you should be investing in a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA, this video is made specifically for you. We get this question all the time. It's a difficult question to answer because it depends on a lot of factors. The variables for the comparison are as follows. We're gonna be using a 40 year old person who's trying to retire at the age of 62. That means we have 22 years of contributing into these two plans before we start taking out income. We're gonna be contributing $19,500 a year into each of the two plans. We're gonna be assuming a 6.5% rate of return every single year. And in terms of inflation, we're gonna assume a 2.75% inflation rate. So in order to know which of these two accounts, the Roth or the traditional IRA is going to be better, the first thing we have to do is figure out how much money we're going to have at age 62. Now in this particular example, because we're using the same set of variables, we should actually end up with the exact same amount of money. The difference is going to be the tax status. We are solving for the future value. And so the future value equals the annual payment multiplied by one plus the annual interest rate or the rate of return to the number of years we are investing, which is 22 minus one divided by the annual rate of return. Sounds difficult and complicated, but it's actually not. You can do this super simple in Excel. Since all the variables are identical, the only difference is tax classification. Both of these accounts at age 62, if they earn six and a half percent, and we contribute 19.5, they should both have $898,981.90. Now that we know how much money we're gonna have in the future, 22 years down the road, if we can earn those rates of returns and contribute those dollars, the next step is to figure out how do we take that $898,000 and turn that into an income stream. And in this particular example, we're gonna assume 30 years worth of income adjusted for inflation at 2.75%. So income from age 62 to 92, adjusted for inflation. Since we started with the same $898,000 and we're using the same inflation rate at 2.75%, both accounts will generate the same amount of annual income at $49,799. But there's a huge difference between that $49,799. One is gonna be completely tax-free, the Roth 401k, and one you're gonna have to pay taxes on, and that's obviously the traditional 401k. So let's talk about how that might break down. Now this can get complicated for the traditional IRA, the Roth is what it is. And the reason it can get complicated is because in this example, we haven't talked about any other money. We haven't talked about social security, which you'll probably have. We haven't talked about other investments, which hopefully and probably you will have. We haven't talked about any other income, uh, a spouse earning income, nothing. So to make it super simple, we're just going to assume that this is the only income that you have. And if all the income you have is the 49,799 coming out of your traditional 401k, you're gonna be taxed on that. Let's assume you're in California. California state tax is gonna be around $1,600. The federal tax is gonna be just over $6,000 a year. And so if you combine those two things, withdrawing out of your traditional 401k, your 49,799 actually becomes 42,100 and $80. If we compare that to our Roth account, it seems like we're comparing 49,799 out of the Roth 401k to 42,180 from the traditional 401k. And so the comparison seems pretty simple, right? The Roth over the traditional. But that's actually not quite the full picture. Uh, in fact, I've I've done a little trickery uh, because I haven't actually given you a real apples to apples comparison. And those of you that know much about these accounts and maybe have been following the channel for a while, you've probably caught on what I've done. See, if we're contributing $19,500 to a Roth account and $19,500 to a traditional account, traditional IRA, traditional 401k, that's actually not the same comparison. In order to put $19,500 into the Roth, we have to pay taxes 
on that $19,500. We do not have to pay taxes on the $19,500 putting into a traditional 401k. So the comparison is actually off. In order to make this comparison real, we now have to go back and we have to account for the additional dollars that we actually paid into the Roth 401k because we paid taxes in all of those years. So let's say that you're a single person making $150,000 a year in the state of California to calculate the tax that we would have had to pay on that $19,500. We first have to know what tax bracket you're in state and federal. So in the California state income tax, $150,000, you're paying $10,600 in tax. Uh, at the federal level, if you're making $150,000 a year, you're paying around $29,000 in tax. That basically puts you in an effective tax rate of 26.43%. If we apply that effective tax rate to the $19,500 that you contributed to your Roth account, that means that you actually paid in an additional $5,000 $153 compared to your traditional IRA. Let me say that another way. If you want to put $19,500 into a traditional 401k or a traditional IRA, forget about any limits. If you want to put $19,500 into a tax deferred vehicle, it costs you $19,500. You don't have to pay tax on that contribution. If you want to put $19,500 into a Roth 401k or a tax-free vehicle, you actually have to pay the tax on the 19.5 first, which means it doesn't cost you $19,500. It actually costs you $24,653. And so that's the comparison that we need to make in order to do a real apples to apples comparison. So to do the real comparison, we have to compare the 19.5 in the Roth, which is actually 19.5 plus the tax of 5,100, 51.53, to that total amount going into the 401k, the traditional 401k. So the way that we're going to do that is let's just assume that our $19,500 is the same in both categories. We're paying 19.5 into the Roth we're paying 19.5 into the traditional 401k. We know that the Roth account paying in that 19.5 is gonna cost us around $5,100 in taxes, which, okay, we can account for that. The way that we're gonna account for that is we're gonna take that $5,100, $5,153, and we're gonna throw that into an after-tax account and bolt it on to the traditional 401k. So now we're comparing our Roth account to our traditional 401k plus an after-tax account where we're paying in the taxes that we would have to pay in the Roth account. And that's how we will do the comparison. So our $5,153 over 22 years at 6.5% is going to grow to around $237,000. We're gonna factor in some capital gains along the way, and instead of using the, the full 237, we're gonna use $218,965. That $218,000, if we were to turn that into an income stream that's gonna last from age 62 to 92 at a 6.5% rate of return with 2.75% inflation, is going to generate us about $12,000 per year now that $12,000 a year of income is also going to have tax on it because it's an after-tax account. So by the time we pay federal capital gains and California state tax, because this is a California example, uh, our after-tax withdrawal on the dollars that we paid in to the after-tax account to account for the taxes we had to pay on the Roth will be 11,193 additional income dollars. I promise you that we're close. We're so close. So if we now update our comparison, we have our Roth 401k that is gonna generate us $49,799 tax-free. We don't have to worry about the taxes. That's how much we're getting out of the Roth, assuming we can earn 6.5% at 2.75% inflation. In terms of the 401k, we now have the 401k plus the after-tax account, which is 11,193 
plus the 42,180. That is an after-tax number for both. And so it seems to me the Roth account is losing by around 33 to $3,500 a year in income. But again, there's still variables here that are not accounted for. All this math, all these, you know, to the penny numbers, they really depend on one variable that we haven't talked really at all about, and that is what are future tax rates going to be? It seems to me that the Roth is losing to the 401k plus the after-tax account, but we're assuming that tax rates essentially stay the same for the next 40, 50, 60 years. And so it's interesting not to compare which one's better. I know everyone wants to ask which one is better, the Roth or the traditional IRA, the 401k. And I understand why you're asking that question. But the question you really need to ask is, what do future tax rates need to be in order for one or the other to be better? And in this specific example, we've got someone who's making $150,000 a year in the state of California, maxing out Roth 401k and traditional 401k. Their effective tax rate needs to be less than 18.35% in order for the traditional 401k to beat the Roth. Let me say that again. If your effective tax rate is 18, let's just call it 18.5% or less, you are better off investing in tax deferred vehicles. If your effective tax rate is going to be higher than 18.5%, you will be better off investing tax free. So, should you invest in a Roth account or a tax free account, or should you invest in a tax deferred account? And the answer is this if when you go to take out the dollars, you're going to be paying more than 18 to 19% as an effective tax rate, you're probably better off investing tax-free. So if you have a Roth 401k and you'd like to put away $19,500 and you're trying to decide, do I do the Roth or the traditional? Really, the answer comes down to what's your future tax rate going to be? If you don't have a Roth 401k and yet you know that you are going to be in a high future tax bracket, then your fallback option or your next option would be looking at cash value life insurance. Cash value life insurance is gonna grow tax-free. You're gonna have access to it tax-free. You're gonna be able to put in as much or as little as you want without any IRS contribution limits or income limits. And then maybe best of all, if you need to access those dollars early before 59 and a half, you have complete access to your money at any time for any reason, assuming that you have cash value available to you. And so if that's you, I would encourage you to reach out to us and we can explore what cash value life insurance would look like for you, knowing that in the future, you're probably gonna be in a high tax bracket and investing tax-free is gonna be way more advantageous than investing tax deferred. Hopefully this has been helpful. I'm so grateful that you joined us and until next time, take care.